I've solved a lot of leak code problems. I've gotten to the point where I can probably write a DFS algorithm faster than you can take a piss. Now, why is that? Am I just a genius? No, because this is more than just about coding. The human brain is like a circuit, a neural network, if you will. There's inputs and then outputs. All the stuff that goes on in between is the circuit that forms your brain. When you're learning something for the first time, you're actually literally creating a little circuit in your brain with little neurons. And that circuit tells your brain what to do. So the reason I can write DFS very, very quickly is because I have a circuit for DFS literally physically in my brain. The problem is that building this circuit is slow. It takes time. And sometimes you have to concentrate really, really hard just to get one of these little neurons in there and then form that connection and then form another connection and just sit there for minutes, hours, sometimes days. And then finally, you have this thing in your brain. And the beautiful part is that once you have it in your brain, now the time comes to use this circuit. It goes very, very quickly. Oh, which algorithm do I need to write? DFS? Boom. It just went straight through. So just like when it comes to machine learning, the training phase is the most time consuming part. It's computationally intensive. It requires effort. But once it's there, running through that neural network is relatively quick. So that's how you learn. But there's one caveat. Just by doing something a single time does not mean you have fully learned it. Remember that time you solved a leak code problem, thought you understood it, and later tried to do it again, but you couldn't? The reason is just because you write an algorithm once does not mean you have a deep understanding of it, and that's because you're a human, not a machine. If you write DFS once, you might develop some of these nodes in this circuit, but I guarantee you won't have every single one of them. So next time you try DFS, you might get parts of it correctly, and maybe you will get the problem correct, but it might take you a really long time to re-remember parts of it. So what's the solution to this? Do the same thing multiple times, aka spaced repetition. This applies to more than just leak code, but continuing the analogy, that's why I created the Neat Code 150 and then ordered them in such a way that you can solve similar problems grouped together. So anytime you're trying to learn something, make it easy for yourself to do the same thing multiple times. In terms of coding, solve a problem, and while it's still relatively fresh in your mind, how about the next day? Ideally, you can solve a slightly different problem, so then you can kind of fire off different neurons because we know there is a layer of memorization. Brains can sometimes just memorize things. In terms of machine learning, that would be considered like overfitting, for example. You don't want to like overfit too much for one problem. You want this circuit to be loose enough such that it can be extended. Maybe you see a slightly different problem and during that problem you have this network and then you realize, oh, actually there is another possibility. You go down this path, but then for the most part, you can kind of still connect to the rest of the circuit. You just had to create maybe one new node this time. It's not impossible to create a couple new nodes on the fly, but it's very, very hard to create a brand new fully working circuit on the fly. For example, when you first learned to program, I was pretty good at math, but when I first learned programming, I was like, what? This is completely different than any sort of thinking I've ever done before. I had a bunch of circuits in there for math. Yeah, it might help you a little bit when it comes to programming, but this computer science or programming circuit is very, very different from the math one, even though there probably is some overlap. Then eventually it does start to get easier because you have some sort of a foundation and then you learn a new concept, maybe even a new programming language. You have have something to relate this back to. Oh yeah, loops in this language kind of similar to loops in another language. One programming paradigm compared to another. You need some reference and that's why there is a learning curve when learning new things. Initially, if we were to draw it out, it kind of looks like this. It's a flat line initially, but eventually you do get that exponential growth. You just have to get past the first phase of this part. 
also there's the use it or lose it principle. If you don't use a circuit inside of your brain for a long time, it's going to start diminishing. It's going to die off. This thing's dead. That's dead because your brain is efficient. If I'm not using these resources, for example, memory, right? Like RAM, it's kind of like a computer. I can deallocate this memory and use it for something else. Why have this memory used up if I'm not even using it? So maybe you learned DFS back in college, but it's been years and now you forgot all of it. And yeah, that's what happens with the brain. The only reason I can write it pretty quickly, even to this day, is because I pretty regularly solve these types of problems on the YouTube channels. To finish up, I want you to know, nothing I said in this video is rocket science. It's not even really my theory. All of this stuff that I've said is generally accepted. This is how the human brain works. And when you remember that, that's when you can try to learn more efficiently.